cheeky cheeky polar <coughs> coordinates. Thank you. <laughs> so we've got this uh, polar and we've got this r equals 4 sine theta cos squared theta. Phi is between 0 and pi over 2. It says the tangent to P is perpendicular to the initial line, which is this one. Show that P has these coordinates. Um, the person who sent this to me on Instagram, um, they didn't actually give me the marks, but I think this is, on observation, worth quite a lot of marks. So, what does it mean that the tangent here is perpendicular to this line? So it's vertical. Now, what does it mean to be a vertical line? Vertical means that all the coordinates on this line are, well, all the coordinates on that line have a fixed x value, okay? Fixed x value means that the x value does not change. Does not change means the rate of change of the x values with respect to theta, yeah, as theta changes, is zero, okay? But what is x generally when we deal with polars? Well, remember how we describe things in polar form. So there's your initial line. Here's a coordinate with some radius and theta. This x is r cos theta. Okay? So we're saying the rate of change of r cos theta has to be zero. Okay? So let's start with that. x equals r cos theta. And x is this, uh, sorry, r is this. We're going to sub that into that. We're going to have to differentiate it, make it equal to zero, and prove that the theta value we get is pi over six, okay? Oh God, okay, this is why this is long. So x equals r, which is this, times cos theta, which will make that cos cubed. So we'll get four sine cos cubed. Now, because we have to differentiate, I'm going to write as cos theta all cubed. Now let's differentiate. This is product rule. Differentiate the first term times by the second term plus differentiate the second term. So there we differentiate the angle first is minus sine. Minus sine times, so we bring down the power, not quite off the power. So minus sine times 3 is minus 3 sine and then we knock one off the power times the first term. Okay, just to recap, differentiate the first term times the second plus differentiate the second times the first. And we're making that equal zero. Let's clean this up. We have four cos theta to the power of four minus three. Uh, sorry, no, minus 12, isn't it? Even though when we can... Um, Make equal to zero, we can cancel out the fours, can't we? Uh, we have minus 12 sine theta squared cos theta squared is zero. So we're going to have to prove that that gives us pi over six. Now the first thing I notice, yeah, we can divide through by four, make that three. But cos squared, I can factorize that out. So I'm going to write it back like this, cos squared theta. This will become cos squared theta minus, uh, that would go sine squared theta, which is nice. And then, am I missing some? Oh, I missed the three. This is why I'm bugging out. All right, I'm bugging. So after all that yap, I couldn't even convert it to cos 2 theta. So here, um, I get cos squared theta minus 3 sine squared theta is 0. And the best way to do this, I mean, you could convert everything into one function. Um, I'm personally thinking to change that into tan. So if you move that here to 3 sine squared, or no, yeah. So we get cos squared theta is 3 sine squared. Divide by cos, so we get tan squared, is divide by 3, 1 third. So we're going to get tan theta is 1 over root 3. The reason I'm not doing plus or minus is because of the range tan is acute. We're going to keep it positive, okay? 
So inverse tan of one over root three is pi over six. Sweet. Now in order to find r, I need to know what the value of sine and cos are. Okay, or you could just sub in all the values. Um, personally, what I like to do is just use my triangle. So I can just sub in the absolute values. So you have theta, tan is ops over the adjacent, uh, three plus one, so two. So sine theta is a half, and cos theta is root three over two. But you would have got these anyway from just subbing it to here. So to find the r value, we're doing four times a half times cos squared. So when you square this, you get three over four. The force cancel, you get three over two which is that, okay? So part A is proved, I'm gonna clear this and let's find that shaded region and show it equals this. Part B, find the area of the shaded region. Well, first of all, prove it's this. Uh, well, just like in Cartesian, uh, to find the area, you're doing the vertical areas, right? You're summing rectangles. For polars, we're summing sectors, okay? So it's basically the sector formula, half r squared theta. It's just here we're doing small changes in the angle, so it's d theta. So we have that the area is a half integral between the two theta values, which p is pi over 6 and q is pi over 4, which is where these are coming from, pi over 6 and pi over 4 of r squared d theta. Okay, now we just sub in and show somehow it's this. So we've got to square this, so we have the area is a half integral pi over 6, pi over 4 of 16. So 16 sine squared cos to the 4. d theta. Half of 16, 8. Uh, I guess that's not even that important right now. Uh, looking at what they want us to do, cos to the power of 4 theta, I'm assuming that's coming from cos to the power of 4, maybe? But they do have a sine squared 2 theta. So, uh, I think I'm going to think about this first. Because sine squared 2 theta, if I can somehow make that appear here, hopefully everything else can maybe uh, appear itself. So... Let's think about that, sine squared 2 theta. I know sine, whoops, I know sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta. So when I square that, I get 4 sine squared cos squared theta. So if I can write that here, so my area is... Should I just multiply in the half now to give me 8? So it's the integral between pi over 6 and pi over 4. So that times that is 8, but I want to make 4. So it's 2 times 4 sine squared cos squared. But what would be left? Cos squared. All right. So this gives me 8. Sine squared, cos to the power of 4. Cool. And that is my sine squared 2 theta. So my A is the integral between pi over 6, pi over 4, of 2, sine squared 2 theta. But then this is cos squared theta. I don't see any cos squared theta. We're going to somehow use the double angle IDs. I want a cos 2 theta. So here... I'm going to use the fact that cos 2 theta is 2 cos squared theta minus 1. Add the 1 to get cos squared 2 theta plus 1, and then I'm going to divide by 2. So I'm going to rewrite this, cos squared, as cos 2 theta plus 1 over 2. Uh, this 2 cancels this, then I'm going to expand. So I get the integral between pi over 6, pi over 4. You'll be interested to know how many marks this question is. So expanding, I get sine squared 2 theta cos 2 theta, which is what they wanted. But I'm getting plus 
sine squared 2 theta. But that's not what they wanted. They wanted a cos 4 theta. So it looks like we're going to have to do the double angle ID again. Okay. So um, the double angle ID involving sine squared 2 theta would be cos 4 theta, which is 1 minus 2 sine squared uh, 2 theta. So moving all this around, I'm going to get sine squared 2 theta is 1 minus cos 4 theta. And then I have to divide by the coefficient of 2, so a half. Yeah, and that's what we end up getting. So, nice. I'm just going to write that answer up here. And then we can basically proceed with the actual integration. So my A, which is now proved between pi over 6 and pi over 4, is sine squared 2 theta cos 2 theta, um, and then the rest of it, plus a half minus half cos 4 theta d theta. Okay, then it says, find the shaded region in the form a plus b pi, where a and b are rational numbers. So basically, we just need to integrate that. So let's form a strategy. This question here is actually normal maths. Nothing special about this integral. It's all just guessing. As you guys know, my guessing method is just reverse chain rule. I'm going to rewrite this slightly. The first function is actually a Pavan function, or a power function. I'm going to write like this. Cos 2 theta sine of 2 theta squared. And then I have that plus a half, minus a half, cos 4 theta, okay, d theta. Now, how can we make a guess here? What's inside this angle, or this bracket, differentiates to what's on the outside? So we're going to reverse that chain rule process by just adding 1 to this power, okay? That's the differentiated angle, so when you integrate, that's going to disappear. We are doing anti-differentiation now. So it's going to be sine 2 theta to the power of 3. But we need to check that. I'm going to differentiate it. Sine 2 theta differentiates to 2 cos 2 theta. But 2 cos 2 theta, we bring down the 3. 2 times 3 is 6. Then we knock one off the power. Okay, but I didn't want a 6 there, so I'm going to do a 6th on both sides. A half is easy. Cos 4 theta, my guess is sine 4 theta. We differentiate to check. That becomes 4 cos 4 theta. But we want it minus a half. So it's always what you want, so you times both sides by what you want divided by what you have. Minus a half divided by 4 is minus an eighth. Okay, so we get that integrates to 1 sixth sine 2 theta cubed. A half goes to a half theta. And that goes to minus 1 eighth sine for theta, what, <laughs> between pi over 6 and pi over 4. Bro's trying to distract me. Uh, I think that's that. 1 6, yep. Okay, now we just sub in our values, right? So subbing in pi over 4, can I do this without a calculator? Sine of pi over 2 is 1, 1 cubed it's just 1. So 1 sixth uh, plus a half of pi over 4 is pi over 8. Uh, sine of pi is 0. So I mean pi over 6. Sine of 2 lots of pi over 6. That's sine of uh, pi over 3. Sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. Then when we cube that, Root 3 over 2 cubed, uh, 3 root 3 over 8. 3 root 3 over 8 times 1 sixth. Okay, I'm not going to do too much in my head. Plus a half of this is pi over 12. Oh, mate, I can't be bothered. 
sine of 4 pi over 6 in radians. Root 3 over 2 times 1 eighth. So minus root 3 over 16. Okay, so we have 1 sixth plus pi over 8 minus uh, 3 root 3 over 8 times 1 over 6. This is where I make most of my mistakes. Minus pi over 12. And this becomes plus, plus root 3 over 16. Which is actually really nice. The um, root 3 over 16 is cancelled. There was actually no root 3 over 16 in the uh, answer. So this gives me hope that I've done this correct. Because I don't know where this question is from. So we have 1 6th pi over 8 minus pi over 12. 1 8th, whoa, 1 8th minus 1 12th. So 1 over 24. And I guess someone in the YouTube comments could let me know where and if I have made a mistake somewhere. So that is it guys, polar coordinates. They're quite involved most of the time. So if you learn something, hit the like button, uh, subscribe for more maths content. And if you're interested in Easter revision courses for further maths, they are gonna be happening. News alert, there is a link in the description so you guys can uh, inquire. Um, Otherwise, there's the Lungang Reddit page where you can submit, submit questions as well. I'll see you guys in the next video. Noise.